Hello everyone, this is Andrew Glazer from GlazerTutoring.com and today I would like to teach you how to use the Rational Zero Theorem to find the possible real zeros of the following function 4x raised to the 4th plus 4x raised to the 3rd minus 25x raised to the 2 minus x plus 6. If I had to repeat that anymore, I'd probably um, go insane. Anyway, um, what is the Rational Zero Theorem? Basically what it says is that if you take the factors of your constant term. Call those factors P. Remember the constant term doesn't have an X next to it. And you take the factors of your leading coefficient, which is the coefficient of the highest power of X. Call those factors Q. If you take the factors P, divide them by the factors Q, this will give you a list of possible real zeros. Maybe some of them will be included, maybe all, maybe none. Right? It just gives you the possibilities. So basically, what are the factors? So let's do it. What are the factors of 6? Whole numbers that multiply to 6. Well, 1 and 6, that's obvious. And 2 and 3, right? It's almost equally obvious. And they're each going to come, which might not be as obvious, a plus and a minus value. Because technically, positive 1 times positive 6 will give you a positive 6. And a negative 1 times a negative 6 will also give you a positive 6. And this wouldn't change, even if this were a negative sign here. It wouldn't change. Still the same. You're always going to do positive and negative values. Okay? Divided then by all the factors of 4. So that's going to be 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. And this one's going to work out to be fun. Because now what we need to do is we need to now figure out, this is the list of all the possible factors of 6, and this is the possible factors of 4. And now what I need to do is list all the individual possibilities. In other words, I have to do this factor divided by this factor. So positive negative 1 divided by positive negative 1 will give you a positive negative 1. Then I have to do this factor divided by this factor. So positive negative 2 divided by positive negative 1 is going to give you a positive negative 2. Then I got to do 3 over 1. That's going to give you a positive negative 3. Then positive negative 6. Okay, great. So I just did all of these numerators over this one denominator. Guess what I got to do now? I got to do this one over this one. Great. So positive negative 1 over positive negative 2 gives you positive negative 1 half. Then the next one, 2 over 2 is a 1. I already got that, so you don't have to write it again. 3 over 2, that's not on the list, so that's going to be a positive negative 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. Then 6 over 2, that's going to give you 3. Thank goodness we already have that, so we can skip. Okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to do the next. Oh, why did I even write out 2 twice? That's silly. I should have just left. <coughs> <coughs> Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. Okay. Well, anyway. Sorry about that. Hopefully I'm back. Anyway, you don't have to write in the other two because it, two, yes, two times two is four, but it's only really one factor. Okay? Because you would have gotten the same possibilities. And then you got to do the same thing over the last uh, denominator. All right? So that's going to be a plus minus one fourth. Right, this is going to be plus minus one half, but thank goodness we already have that, so skip that. This is going to be plus minus three over four, plus minus three over four. This is great, and then six over four. Right, if you reduce that down, that's going to be three over two. Thank goodness we already have that. So I have the list now of all my possibilities. Now, really, how many are there here? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but they're all plus minus, so that means we got sixteen. You got sixteen possibilities right now, but you can only have a maximum of four zeros. And I don't even know if they're all real. Okay? So the way we approach this now, if you cannot use the calculator, is it's literally a guess and check now. It's a guess and check, which is kind of ridiculous. You're not going to do this on, I mean, you know, test 16 values. By the time you do that, the test is over, and you're going to get a four on the exam out of 100. That is not four out of four. But... What I'm going to do here is I'm going to test one of them. I'm going to show you how it's going to work. I'm going to show you my conclusion, and then I'm going to cheat a little bit by using the calculator. All right? So let's test positive 1. So plug in positive 1 for x. What I'm looking for now is I'm looking to see whether this function is going to equal 0. If it does, when I plug in 1 everywhere I see x, if this does indeed equal 0, then I know the value I plugged in, namely positive 1, is going to be a zero of the function. It's a zero, it's not equal to zero, 
All right. Uh, remember, the zeros are defined as x values that result in an overall value for the function of zero. So this is going to be a 4. This is going to be a 4. This is going to be a minus 25. This is going to be a minus 1 and a plus 6. This isn't looking too promising. I don't think this adds up to zero. So guess what we proved? We proved that positive 1 is not a zero of the function. So your 1 out of 16 guess was not one of the four. And I don't even know if any of these, I don't even know if there's going to be four real. Anyway, none of them might work. So the whole goal here is that you'd have to go through the remaining 15, and you'd have to see if any of them work. Okay? Now, that's a little bonkers. So if you have a calculator, what you're going to do instead is this. You're going to graph this thing. Go 4x raised to the fourth. 4x raised to the fourth, then you do plus 4x cubed. All right, then you're going to do minus 25x squared, 25x squared, then you do minus x, and then you're going to do plus 6, and graph it. Okay, so here we go. Now, when you graph this thing, all right, the real zero, I'm going to blow this up a little bit. Blew it up. Now, <laughs> sorry, something else crossed my mind, which I'm not going to state. Anyway, um, so what I realize now is this graph function crosses the x-axis at four points. Now, these four points indicate real zeros. Okay, they're real zeros. They might not be rational, but they're definitely real. Okay, and remember, the amount of zeros that this function can have as a max is the equal to the highest power of x, so it's four. So, since I know this thing crosses the x-axis at four places, I now know it's going to have four, zero, four real zeros. Now, I don't know, though, if it's going to have four rational real zeros, meaning numbers that truncate, right? Pi is irrational. It's 3.14159, ba 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 ba. It doesn't end. That's irrational, all right? It's real, though. I mean, it's a real number. It's just irrational. Um, so looking at this graph, I now know, and I'm going to make an educated guess, and we're going to check. I have one, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I have a potential real 0 at roughly negative 3. Just by looking at the graph, it might be a little hard to see. But we'll do a test. Then this looks like, to me, negative 1 half, right? So x is equal to negative 1 half. Then this looks like maybe positive 1 half, right? x is equal to positive 1 half. And then this looks like a positive 2 over here. So x is equal to positive 2. Now what I want to see, let's get rid of this. What I want to see now is... Out of the 16 possibilities, were these four in my list? Well, sure, negative three was here, negative one half was here, positive one half was here, and a positive two was over here. So they all were included on this list of 16. But remember, that's not guaranteed to happen. I'm not saying that all of the zeros in this function will always be able to be found this way. That's not what I'm saying. It might work out that way, and it did on this problem. Or only three of them might work, and you might have one then that remains that's imaginary. Or you might have two, and then two's going to be imaginary. Or you might have only one, and then three's going to ma be imaginary. Or you might have none, and they're all going to be imaginary. Okay? Or th there might be none that work, but they're going to be real and irrational. So this theorem is kind of, it's nice, but it's not the nicest theorem in the world. Um, I don't like it. Nothing personal. Nothing personal. I just don't like it. What you would find now, if you plugged in, I'll do one of the, I'll do one of them. So let's do a negative three. All right. So what I'm going to do is plug in negative three for every x. I'm going to use the calculator, right? So four times negative three. Always put the number in parentheses so you don't make any mistakes in terms of the calculator interprets what you mean. Plus then four, open parentheses, negative three, then cube it. Then go negative or minus 25, not negative, but minus 25, then plug in the negative three and square that bad boy. And then go minus now, open parentheses, negative three, close them, and then plus six. That's a minus. Just kidding. Plus six. Oh, <gasps> look, zero. It equals zero. That's what we expected, right? That's how I know it's going to be a real zero. This is kind of using now the remainder theorem where we can plug in these possibilities 
And if it gives a zero remainder, it's also known as a zero value. But anyway, if you tested the remaining three, you'd notice that it will work out as well. And the remaining then out of the 16, the remaining 12 won't work. Thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I hope this helps. If it does, like and subscribe. Maybe even tell your classmates. All right. Classmates are friends. Even if you're not friends, if you're just classmates, if you tell them about our channel, you might become friends. It's a good way to make friends. Spread the word. We really appreciate it, by the way. And we have thousands of videos out there. Not only math, but chemistry and physics as well. We have a whole bunch of stuff coming. We solve specific questions because that's what you're going to see on your test. It's the best way to study. Check out our channel. Do the problems. And then, if you have trouble getting the answer, check the answer with our video. Or if you have trouble getting to the answer, we got a whole video solution out there for you. All right? I'd love to help you with more. Take care.